Yesterday, we did a benchmark test between the brand new Surface Book and the MacBook Pro 15 inch. I thought when I purchased the MacBook Pro that this was going to be a completely even test, but I've realized that I made a bit of a mistake, and so I wanted to uh, preface this video explaining my mistake before you watch the entire video and get the wrong idea. I was under the impression that the i7 processor in the Surface Book was a quad core processor as well. So this is a 2.6 gigahertz i7 processor. The MacBook Pro is a 2.5 gigahertz i7 processor. Um, the MacBook Pro is actually $200 less than the Surface Book. I thought that I was giving the Surface Book the advantage here, but in reality, the MacBook Pro has a quad core 2.5 gigahertz processor, and the Surface Book has a 2.6 gigahertz dual core processor. What this means is basically the MacBook Pro has double the processing power. So throughout this video, you're going to see me in shock trying to figure out how two computers with what I thought were identical processors were having such different benchmark tests uh, when in reality, they have very different processors. I still think this is somewhat of a fair comparison considering that the MacBook Pro is still cheaper. Obviously, it is a little bit bigger, but the Surface Book is also a little bit bigger than a 13-inch MacBook Pro. So I just wanted to be completely fair before you watch this video because, spoiler alert, the MacBook Pro <laughs> destroys the Surface Book in this benchmark test. What's up guys, I am Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and I am very excited about what's in front of me here. This is the new Microsoft Surface Book. It's the first Windows laptop that I am actually excited about. It's supposed to be just as elegant and beautifully designed as the MacBook Pro, but also just as powerful. And the price is pretty similar for both of these units. So what we're going to be doing today is a benchmark test. We're going to be using Photoshop, Lightroom, and Premiere on both of these machines to see which computer can actually use the software best. The specs that we have on the Surface Book here, we have a, a Core i7 Intel processor 6600 at 2.6 gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 SSD, okay? The Surface Book here costs $2,700 the way it's outfitted. And when I went to the Mac store today and I wanted to get something somewhat comparable, the closest thing I could find was this 15 inch for $2,500. So it's actually $200 cheaper for the MacBook Pro here, but obviously it doesn't have a touch screen. It doesn't have the ability to remove the screen and become a tablet. But uh, spec wise, it has a Core i7 processor instead of a 2.6 gigahertz processor like the Surface Book has 2.5. They both have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And this also has a 512 SSD hard drive in it as well. I've been told by Microsoft that during their benchmark test where they say that this thing's 50% faster, they were comparing it to a 13 inch MacBook Pro with an i7 processor. That was not an option for me when I was in the Apple store. That's why I went with the 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro. If I stand these up, you can see they're very, very close. I, it's almost like the Surface Book is like a, a 14 inch laptop. And then thickness wise, at the bottom, it's thinner, but you can see here that it's thicker on the top with the Surface Book. So I'm sure some people are going to argue with me that I should have gotten the 13 inch MacBook Pro. I didn't feel like that was fair because it was a lot cheaper and uh, it had the i5 processor instead of the i7. For this first test, we have a very simple setup inside of Photoshop. I'm a wedding photographer myself. Uh, when I'm delivering JPEG images to clients, sometimes I wanna give them the full res JPEGs, but then I also wanna shrink down all of the images so that they can easily put them online and email them and share them. So what I have here is about 200 images on both computers. I've created a batch that's going to open them, resize them to 800 pixels wide, and then save them out as a level eight JPEG. Let's see which computer can do this fastest. Is this actually going this fast? I can't tell for sure, but it looks like the MacBook Pro is going so much faster that it's not working, but I just checked the folder and it actually is working. It's like on the Surface Book here, they're still getting married and <laughs> on the MacBook Pro, you could see we're 
taking posed pictures already. This is an unbelievable difference. Wow. So the MacBook Pro finished right around two minutes, two minutes, two seconds. Surface Book is still going. It's got a ways to go. It's now at three minutes, 18 seconds, and we are still going on the Surface Book. Why is it so much slower? All right, so we just finished up. The MacBook Pro did it in two minutes, two seconds. The Surface Book did it in three minutes, 48 seconds, coming very close to 100% faster on the MacBook Pro. Uh, it's probably like 90% faster on the MacBook Pro. I can't quite figure out why that would be. If, if the processor is supposed to be the same speed, has the same RAM, they both have SSD hard drives. I don't, I don't, I don't know why but let's move on to the next test. All right, so now we're in Lightroom. I have 50 raw images. I think these were taken on the D800, D810, 36 megapixel raw files. We're going to export 50 of them to the desktop at the exact same time. Three, two, one, go. So both computers are going right now. I have a uh, stopwatch going so that I can tell you how long it took for each computer and then we can also get a percentage of how much faster one computer is over the other. Okay, at one minute, 23 seconds, the MacBook completely finished. The Surface Book does not even appear to be halfway done yet. Still going, still going, boom, stop. Two minutes and 53 seconds. So it took one minute, 23 seconds for the MacBook Pro to finish. Two minutes, 53 seconds for the Surface Book. That means the, the MacBook Pro is more than 100% faster. Is that math? That's crazy. I, I never would have thought that was possible. Um, I don't, I don't know what to say to that. So at this point, the MacBook Pro is beating our Windows machine so bad that we've decided, you know what, we need to go check the specs on our desktop computers. We actually have six Alienware desktops that we work off of here. Uh, they were very expensive. I think they might have each been over $3,000 each, maybe over $4,000 each. Um, so we did this Lightroom test on two of our desktops. So the MacBook Pro did it in one minute, 24 seconds, somewhere in there. The first desktop that we tried it on, it came up with two minutes, 49 seconds, and that was our newest desktop. I have no idea why. We then tested another desktop that we had, and we got it down to one minute, 15 seconds. Both of these computers have solid state drives, so I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but it's still pretty amazing that the MacBook Pro was only a few seconds away from our $3,000 desktop computer in its prime. It's pretty amazing. So at this point, let's move on to the next test, Adobe Premiere. For our final test, we're going to be using 4K footage in Adobe Premiere. This should be the most hardcore test for the processor and the GPU. And we're gonna do a few tests here to see which computer actually handles this footage the best. Right now I have seven clips on each computer within Premiere. These are 4K video clips shot on the brand new Sony AR7 II. And first, let's just see if each of these computers can play back this footage. And we'll, we'll set it to full resolution here. So let's see if it can handle this. We'll start with the uh, Surface Book here. Okay, it's definitely lagging. So the Surface Book at full resolution in Premiere cannot smoothly play back 4K footage. Let's try the MacBook Pro. I have to say, the footage on the MacBook Pro looks perfect in full resolution. That is a huge difference in both of these computers right off the bat, um, because in all honesty, using Photoshop and using Lightroom, for the average user, isn't going to require you sit there and batch export tons and tons of things. I never have laggy Photoshop when I'm in Photoshop because I'm usually just working on one document at a time. 
Premiere is the program that I'm using every single day that does sometimes give me issues, just like I'm getting here on the Surface Book. We'll try again to play on the Surface Book. So it starts playing back, it's smooth, and then it starts just becoming really jittery, and it's, you see, frame by frame by frame. Let's set them both to half resolution. All right, so now we're in half resolution. We'll try the Surface Book first, see if it can play back. Even at one half resolution, the Surface Book is lagging. It's not able to play back this footage in 4K. Let's set it to one eighth. At this point, you can really see how pixelated it is. It is still lagging. Wow. Yeah, right now we're just trying to figure out if there's anything we could potentially be doing wrong. Why in the world would it not be able to play back even at 1 8th resolution? We've checked, we've checked the GPU settings in Premiere and I talked to somebody at Adobe and he was telling me that normal playback doesn't use the GPU anyway, but we've tried it anyway with GPU on and off and I cannot get Premiere to play back smoothly with 4K footage, gosh, it just starts lagging within like one second. So the only option, if you're gonna be working on this computer, is to render out the entire workspace uh, before actually working. What that does is uh, it will render through the 4K footage, it will make a much smaller file that you're editing, uh, and then obviously you can edit on any computer no matter how slow it is, but rendering might take a while. So let's quickly do a render test. We have the exact same footage in this timeline. It's approximately 20 minutes of 4K footage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just hit render timeline on both computers and we will see which one can render all the footage the fastest. So rendering the entire work sequence took approximately 30 minutes. I should have timed it, but I didn't. But what I did time was the amount of time that the Surface Book took to actually catch up. The MacBook Pro finished about three and a half minutes faster than the Surface Book. Now, of course, when you see when I play back this footage, I can play it back at you know full resolution because it's rendered on the Surface Book, it's going to be super smooth. I had a bunch of tests that I actually wanted to do to see you know how many effects I could put on each machine before it started to lag, but being that the, the Surface Book actually lags before you put any effects on it, I'm not exactly sure what we can do. Just out of curiosity, because the MacBook Pro is able to play back this 4K footage, I'm going to delete the render files, and then I'm going to put effects on these video clips one by one and just see how many effects I can actually get on before it starts to lag a little bit. Let's just first stick a RGB curve onto this footage. <clears throat> I'll just make it look crazy. All right, so we made it a little red. Let's see if it can play this back smoothly. It looks perfect. Let's add a little bit of sharpening. Unbelievable. I like, <laughs> I'm not sure that our Mac Daddy desktops could play this back smoothly with two effects on it. It looks perfect. Let's add a third effect. This is getting ridiculous. This is like, Normally I would do this last. I wouldn't edit footage with all of these effects on here. Make it purple and we'll try to play it back. So now it has two different color effects on it and sharpening. It looks perfect, <laughs> it looks perfect. Let's add a fourth effect. Two strip, don't know what that is. Let's drop that on there. Changes the look again. Now we have three color effects. Let's see if it can play this back. Okay. Now, it's certainly still editable, but it is just barely starting to lag, but maybe it's dropping a frame here and there, but this still looks really good. Like, I could easily edit this footage. So if we look at the footage without any effects on the Surface Pro, it still looks better, and it's playing back more smoothly with four effects on the MacBook Pro, unbelievable. Let's add a fifth effect, Cinespace 100. We'll drag that on there. Okay, it's definitely slowed down now. It looks like maybe it's dropped to like 12 frames a second or something. So I've opened up Task Manager on Windows here and when I'm playing back this 4K footage in Premiere, 
the CPU spikes at 100%, um, at over three gigahertz, uh, which is actually faster than what the processor is uh, rated for. So I don't understand why this would be using all of the processor power just to play back raw footage, but it seems to be. And I also have to say that when I open the 4K footage in like the Windows movie player, it plays back fine. So something is going on with Premiere here that's not allowing it to play back smoothly. So now that we know uh, the mistake that we made with the processor, I wanna do one more conclusion wrap up uh, video here and just go over what these two machines were made for, what you're actually paying for. And obviously, uh, now that I know that the processors are different, it makes a lot of sense because it's probably impossible to fit a quad core processor in the top unit of the Surface Book here. Yeah, I mean, what, what you're paying for is the ability to do this and have uh, you know a completely separate, very powerful tablet. Um, it's just when you compare it with a quad core processor, it's not going to be able to keep up. But the truth is, I don't think there's any way that you'd be able to fit a quad core processor in this really small tablet here. So you kind of have to pick and choose your battles here. Are you looking for a workhorse that can just render out videos and pictures as quickly as it possibly can? Or are you looking for the newest, hottest technology that you know is this hybrid laptop slash tablet that's a touch screen and can kind of do a little bit of everything? I'm convinced that 99.9% .9 of people don't do the things that I do every single day, which is rendering out all these pictures and videos or editing 4K video footage. The average person has no use for that. So in that situation, um, the average person might lean towards having something that can be a tablet and, and has a few more options. But at the same time, it's very expensive the way that it's outfitted. At $2,700, it's certainly uh, not as easy of a purchase as the Surface Pro 4, which has many of the same features and the same specs. So at the end of the day, I'm glad that I know now that there's not some Apple magic and that's the reason why um, it's able to do everything twice as fast. It literally has a twice as fast processor in it. But if you're just looking at straight up dollars, the MacBook Pro is still $200 cheaper. Yes, it's a little bit bigger, but if you're just looking for raw power, obviously the MacBook Pro is the clear winner, but if you're looking for something that's convertible and you can draw on it, and it's really like pushing technology forward and it's this brand new piece of exciting uh, innovation, then the Surface Book is obviously going to be the best choice. If you've enjoyed this video, you can check out some of our other videos with the Surface Book here. We've compared it to a few other products and you can also check out many of our other photography and video related content on our channel and make sure to subscribe because we have a lot more content coming your way.